Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I'll start with just a couple of announcements. On April 15th, tax day at 9 p.m., we'll have our next Ask Dr. Pam session and uh, this will be for the first time open to non-members of the Wellness Forum and uh, it's just an open forum. You can ask me stuff that you want to ask. I mean, hopefully about stuff related to health and diet, but you know what I mean. So that's coming up and then on April 16th is our next conversations with Chef Dell spring veggies and how to use them creatively. He's cookbook writing again, so the ideas are really flowing where food is concerned. And then on April 28th, advanced study with me is going to be about this silly book, Grain Brain, that everybody wants more information about. Um, and then last but not least, we are now taking enrollments for the Diet and Lifestyle Intervention course, which begins the first Wednesday in June. And this year, doctors get 39 CMEs for it, nurses 39, dietitians 39. So healthcare professionals should take advantage of this opportunity to learn about how to incorporate not only diet, but a different approach to things like vaccinations and musculoskeletal issues and mental health and et cetera, et cetera, into their practice. So get in touch with us at the office or send me an email and we'll be happy to give you more information about any or all of those things. Lots of exciting stuff coming up. All right, today I want to talk about a hot potato political item, but we have to. It's Obamacare and how the mandates affect you and some advice that I have for you in view of where the law stands now. Um, the reason I say where the law stands now is it seems to be a moving target. Things change day to day. But I guess full disclosure here, I'm against this law. I did not think it was a good idea. I've been telling people since it was proposed that it was going to result in higher costs and decreasing quality of health care. Um, we know a whole lot more about it now. We finally got it passed and had a chance to read it. And so um, and many aspects have been set aside. So where does that leave people like you and I as consumers? Well. The first point of concern is that the implementation of the program has always been contingent upon a lot of young and healthy people signing up to pay premiums in order to subsidize the older population that is sicker and going to chew up more medical expenses. Well, that's not happening. Now, Kentucky is one example. As of early March, uh, there had been 280,468 signups with Medicaid comprising 233,378 of those people, like 80%. That's not the number, the, the percentage or ratio that the administration said we had to have. The federal government's offering some subsidies matching funds to the states, but there's no guarantee that after the three-year period that those subsidies are built in that the feds are going to continue, which will leave states in an awful position to either have to raise taxes and cover those bills themselves or to discontinue services or reduce coverage and that sort of thing. The impact on healthcare providers, not any prettier. First, the promise that people could keep their doctors, clinics, hospitals hasn't turned out to be true. For one thing, a lot of doctors, clinics, and hospitals are not part of the plans that people are signing up for. And another thing is reimbursements to doctors are decreasing while the workload, mainly due to paperwork and reporting, has increased. Um, lots of docs and hospitals are just opting out of the system. And uh, it's astounding to me the number of physician friends I have who want to be out of the healthcare business at this point in time. Now, how will the law affect costs? Well, they're gonna go up. They've already gone up. There are two issues to be considered. First, the law mandates that a whole bunch of stuff has to be covered, preventive services like mammograms and PSA testing at no cost. Well, these things are obviously not free, so they got built into the price of the premiums, and that's why my insurance premiums went up 300% and are continuing to go up in the last 18 months, and it's happened to a lot of our members, too. It's an aggravating thing on a personal level since I'm being forced to pay for services that I will not ever agree to partake in. And on a broader level, because diagnostic tests like mammograms are part of the medical profession's disease mongering culture. Millions of women will be subjected to follow-up testing, biopsies, and treatments for pseudo cancers, just by way of example, contributing even more to our bloated health care bill, which we all end up paying for. Well, in light of this, how can promoters of the law claim that costs are going down? Well, the federal government has some interesting definitions for terms like savings or cost reductions. Now, in the world that you and I live in, here's what a cost reduction means. Something that used to cost $100 now costs 90 Okay, that's a cost reduction. But in the strange land in which the feds define cost savings, a smaller increase is defined as savings. So in an item that costs $100 and then it's expected to go up to $125, but only increases to $110, 
that's considered a cost savings. Now, while this mathematical sleight of hand might work in people's minds, it just doesn't work with their checkbooks because they still have to come up with 10 extra dollars to pay for the increase and that money has to come from somewhere. Well, even without understanding all of this, the law continues to be unpopular. While the administration fought all the way to the Supreme Court to make sure that mandated participation remained part of the law, it's granted so many exceptions, including one that allows almost anybody to opt out of the individual mandate without penalty, that very little of the original law remains intact. This will result in even higher costs as people make the decision to not purchase health insurance now, but uh, to purchase it later when and if they develop sick, uh, some type of illness or disease. Uh, the way that things work is that you can't be turned down, so you can go without insurance for a long time, get diagnosed with something awful, sign up for insurance, pay a few hundred dollars worth of premiums, and then start sucking up thousands of dollars in healthcare expenses. By way of example or comparison, can you imagine how much homeowner's insurance would cost? If you could not buy insurance, wait till your house is on fire, call the insurance company then, pay your first premium, and then get $400,000 in reimbursements before your house that burned down. And in a very short time, with uh, mostly those with burning houses paying small premiums, premiums for health insurance would become so expensive that you and I couldn't afford to insure our homes anymore. In the case of health insurance companies, there definitely, there's gonna be a day of reckoning. You can't keep paying out more than you're taking in. So the feds have conveniently built into the law billions of dollars worth of bailouts for the insurance companies. Well, guess who pays for that? Taxpayers pay for that. So again, the burden on the overall population goes up because of the very poor construction of this law. I'm bothered by increased premiums and I'm bothered by future tax liabilities, but what aggravates me most is that after all of this, we haven't solved a single problem in healthcare. The purpose of the law was to make health insurance and healthcare available to everybody, and I don't disagree with that objective, just for the record. But the law basically made our current method of, our current system of medical ineptitude available to everyone. There was no discussion at the time the law was passed, nor has there been any discussion since then about the useless and harmful tests, drugs, and procedures that constitute most medical care and on which we're spending most of our money. There was also no discussion about anything that could truly and in meaningful ways improve the health of Americans and decrease their costs. Nothing about diet and lifestyle intervention in meaningful terms. I mean, you know, there's a lot of discussion about this stuff, but it just doesn't make much difference in the end. But even what is more frustrating is that millions of Americans lost their health care coverage and a very small percentage of those who didn't previously have coverage signed up. So all of this uncertainty and disruption and the net result is, I think, at the end of the day, and you can, uh, we'll, we'll look back on this particular broadcast and compare notes at some point in time, but I think at the end of the day we're going to see that a couple of million uninsured people got insurance as a result of this. Because they even counted, by the way, in that figure of seven million that the president has quoted or counted the Medicaid, people have to sign up every year anyway. So when, when all the statistical sleight of hand is out of the way, and we really analyze the numbers, it'll be a couple million uninsured people that got coverage. And boy, is this a lot of disruption just for that. So it's a mess, and my Democratic friends are no happier than I am about it, but we're stuck with it. So what can you do getting to the point of all this to protect yourself uh, in the midst of all this? First, you better focus on getting healthy. Increased deductibles and co-pays are making it really expensive to be sick and decreasing types of services like less doctors and, and um, fewer clinics and that sort of thing are gonna make it harder to get medical attention. So your best bet is to focus your time, energy, and resources on becoming as healthy, lean, and fit as you possibly can. It'll allow you to stay out of the system. That's my plan. I have insurance, I just don't wanna use it, okay? If you wanna keep your doctor, find one outside the reimbursement system. Concierge services used to be for the very rich, but not now. They're available to almost anybody for costs as low as $25 a month. Concierge doctors don't take insurance and clients pay out of pocket, but the focus is on health maintenance and health promotion. Uh, patients can consult by doc with docs by email and phone, which is not reimbursable under insurance plans. And educational programs and services can be added that are not generally covered by insurance. If you can afford it, find a concierge doc and sign up. It's part of taking control of your health and it's part of the services we're offering here at the Wellness Forum now. 
Resist the pressure to consent to tests and procedures and services. Providers in the system and insurance companies are rewarded for the numbers they turn. How many people get to see docs? How many people have tests, etc. So don't succumb to this kind of stuff. There's a lot of pressure to get people to do things. I get phone calls and emails and um, letters in the mail from providers, from my insurance provider all the time telling me in sometimes frightening terms, you better go do this now. So don't succumb to the pressure and learn to just say no. If you do find yourself needing some type of traditional health care, and this does happen from time to time, um, comparison shop and don't be afraid to ask for discounts. A friend of mine was told that an MRI would cost $1,600 and since he was paying it for himself, paying for it himself, he managed to get the provider to give it to him for $300. Prices of almost everything are more expensive when you go through third-party payers. I talked about that at length a couple of years ago when we were covering the book Catastrophic Care. But when you're, when you're paying for it, your cost will almost always be lower, but you got to ask and you've got to insist on getting getting a lower price. Last but not least, and while I generally try to stay away from political discussions, as in, you know, which politicians, etc., plan to vote anybody out of office in November who supported and continues to support this monstrosity of a bill. It got passed, we finally had a chance to read it, and it's so awful that even the promoters of it and the president have gutted most of it, and now it's time to elect people who will get rid of the rest of it and come up with a better idea. But in the meantime, Get yourself healthy, find a provider outside the system, and keep, make health promotion your focus. You gotta stay away from this medical system of ineptitude if you wanna, if you wanna thrive and live your full lifespan and have a great quality of life. All right, that's all for now. I'm sure we'll, having, we'll be having more discussion about this in later broadcasts. Have a great day. Pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you again on Thursday.